We've all heard the saying, timing is everything. But why? How do I know what my current timing is set at? How do I adjust it? Why do I need to adjust it? These are just a few of the common questions that we hear every day from car people. The factory settings, well, they're good for all around use. But what if you've changed the cam? Or maybe you added some boost? Or you need to verify the timing settings for that EFI install? Different scenarios require different timing values. But one thing's for sure, Getting it right the first time can sure save a lot of headaches. Whenever you're checking or adjusting the timing on an engine, it's always a good idea to locate and identify the timing marks on the balancer as well as the timing tab. If they're covered with oil or grease, take the time now to clean them up so the marks are visible. I like to mark the zero on the balancer or timing tab with a marker or paint pen for better visibility. It's also a good idea to verify top dead center on the engine before beginning. This is especially true if you suspect that the engine has had the harmonic balancer or timing tab replaced or altered in any way. We put together a great video on just how to do this, so if you'd like to learn more, go to holly.com. The most important tool that you'll need to check your vehicle's ignition timing is a good quality timing light. They range from inexpensive to over the top, so let your wallet be the judge. Using the timing light is pretty simple and straightforward. Most units will have three leads that you'll need to connect Unless you're using a self-powered unit, then you only have one. With the engine off, connect the negative and positive battery leads from the timing light directly to your battery. The inductive pickup lead needs to be connected to the number one spark plug wire. The position of the inductive pickup on the wire doesn't matter as much as the fact that the wire is able to fit between the gap in the jaws of the pickup. Also be sure not to pinch the wire between the ends of the jaws. It should be free. Position of the number one cylinder varies between engine makes, so be sure and consult your owner's manual or the manufacturer to confirm. Also be sure to route any of the wires for the timing light well away from high heat sources or moving parts like the fan or the belts. Locate the marks on the timing indicator as well as the harmonic balancer. If you have a dial back timing light, one that has your adjuster knob, set it to zero before you begin. Start the engine and allow it to warm up to operating temperature. While the engine is warming up, check the distributor for a vacuum advance canister. If your distributor has a vacuum advance, disconnect the vacuum line from the distributor and plug the free end of the hose. With the engine at idle, point the timing gun at the timing tab on the engine. If the timing light's connected correctly, you'll see a flashing light coming from the timing light. On some timing lights, you may have to press a button or depress a trigger in order to see the light. As the timing light is triggered by the spark from the number one cylinder and flashes, it lights up the mark on the balancer, showing it in relationship to the timing marks found on the timing tab. Theoretically, if the timing was set to zero, the zero line on the balancer would be in line with the zero mark on the timing indicator, but since most engines require some degree of advancement, you'll likely see a timing mark somewhere near the 10 degree before top dead center. There are two ways that your timing indicators may be set up. Some manufacturers use a balancer with only one mark and a timing tab affixed to the engine that's marked in degrees from zero to maybe 15 degrees or more. With this setup, ignition timing is read by reading the degree mark on the timing tab that lines up with the mark on the balancer when the timing light flashes. The other method is a balancer that has timing marks on it from zero to 50 or even 60 degrees before top dead center and a timing tab or a pointer that's attached to the engine. To read timing with this setup, look at the pointer or the zero mark on the timing tab and read the degree number on the balancer that lines up with the zero mark or pointer mark during the flash. Degree marks may be hard to read depending on how well the timing marks on the balancer are labeled, so using a marker or paint pen to highlight the degree of timing you're shooting for on the balancer can make it a lot easier. If your timing tab or balancer doesn't have a mark besides zero or it's not marked out far enough, this is where an adjustable timing light comes in handy. Simply turn the knob on the timing light to the desired degree setting, aim the light at the timing tab, and line up the zero mark on the balancer with the zero mark on the indicator. The electronics built into the timing light interrupt the flash of the light and simulate the advancement in degrees that you set on the dial. This style timing light also comes in handy when the timing tab is partially blocked by engine accessories or some add-ons. Keep in mind that this style of timing light may not work with some aftermarket capacitive discharge ignition boxes. Another option if your balancer doesn't have a mark or has very limited marks is to use this equation to determine the distance from top dead center to place a new mark on your balancer. Or you can purchase and install timing tapes 
from MSD and Mr. Gasket. We carry a variety of timing tapes designed for various balance or diameters. In order to advance or retard our ignition timing, we first need to loosen the distributor hold down clamp with a wrench. You want to loosen it just enough so that you can turn it by hand. You don't want it so loose that it moves on its own. Rotating the distributor housing in the same direction as the normal rotation of the rotor will retard the timing, and turning the housing in the opposite direction of the normal rotor rotation advances the timing. After you've adjusted the distributor, check the timing with your timing light. If the timing is set where you want it, go ahead and tighten the hold down clamp on the distributor and you're finished. If not, repeat the process until you have the timing set exactly where you want it. Don't forget to reattach the vacuum line and remove the timing light when you're done. Having your engine's ignition timing too far advanced or too far retarded can have negative effects on the engine's performance. Timing that's too retarded will cause the engine to be sluggish or maybe not even run at all. This occurs because the spark happens after the piston has already reached top dead center on the compression stroke. It prevents a complete burn of the air fuel mixture in the cylinder, thus resulting in a loss of power. Having your timing too far advanced will cause the spark to occur before the piston reaches top dead center. This causes the air fuel mixture in the combustion chamber to ignite before the piston reaches the top of the compression stroke and pushes back down on it, reducing power. But it can cause even more serious damage like pre-detonation or engine ping. Or even worse yet, it can leave holes in your pistons, bent valves, or damage to your cylinder heads. That's why it's always wise to check with your engine manufacturer for the timing settings or your engine builder if you have a custom application. I hope this video gives you a better idea of how and why the ignition timing is so important on your vehicle's engine. To learn more, visit our website, holly.com.